Hi, I'm Stephen Hamp from Archery Supplies. This is a Junxing, I think, M121. I thought it was a spot on Rogue originally because it looked the same. So, the story behind this bow. The bow is a couple of months old. Uh, the customer shot it, dry fired it, and a couple of strings broke where the peep sight is, okay? Because when you dry fire the bow, the peep sight pops out and in the process, it breaks a couple of strands, okay? So, um, we put the peep sight back in. I think he dry fired it again. Um, he came into the shop and said, you've got to fix this because the string shouldn't break. And my, st my staff said um, that strings are not covered under warranty. So I'm just moving this like that. Uh, so that's the way with all bows, it doesn't matter whether it's a lead or Hoyt or Matthews or a PSE, and I probably missed some brands in there. Um, strings are not covered under any bow. Okay, because you can cut them, you can dry fire your bow. When you dry fire your bow, they generally break. Um, now, each strand on here is is rated to around 80 pounds. There's about 22 strands, 1,600 odd pounds of strength. So when you break two strands, it's not the end of the world because you still got heaps of strength, and this bow was probably on 40 pounds, right? So now the customer originally brought two of these bows, one for himself and one for his friend. And I'm going to say this bow is his friend's bow and this is the one I have the problem with. He's got one and has got no problems, right? So his, his friend, or this bow, is the, the owner of this bow, was like, well, you know, you've got to fix this up under consumer law because these strings should be strong enough. So we said $60 to, to fit a new string and to set it all up. And he said, no, you can do it for $30. Bucks. And then proceeded to argue. Right, that you should, you know, in a retail, you should. This is what you should have to put up with, with dealing with, you know, customers and arguments. And I'm like, no, I don't have to deal with this. Um, so he had no receipt. It's really, really hard to give people their money back when they have no receipt. I don't even know if this customer brought the boat from me because there's no receipt, right? So I'm going to sort of say this. Um, as a result, he had a bank. Well, his mate had a bank statement to show he brought something from me a couple of months ago for $800, which as I understand was two of these bows and some spare arrows, right? So I don't know actually how much the bow was and I don't know if that was what was purchased because there was no receipt. It is really hard in a retail shop to give refunds or to understand anything without a receipt. So all retail, if you don't have a receipt, they basically tell you to bugger off. He's like, well, you should have to go through your books to find the receipt. Now, I've had this argument before with people and it just drives me up the wall because it's like, there's all my receipt books. You should have a better system in your business. Right. And I'm not arguing that I shouldn't have a better system with my business. I can tell you a hundred reasons why I don't, right? But this is the way it is, right? So, now this bow sells for about $200, okay? When we sell this bow to a customer, it takes us about an hour to set it up and you know, a little bit, probably an hour and a half to show a person how to shoot and that. We make about 20 bucks when we sell the bow. So I lose money every time I sell one of these, right? When I've got to show a person how to shoot, set it up, take them through the shop. At least an hour and a half it takes. My staff wages are about $40 an hour. So I lose money. They cost me about $80 to sell one of these and I make about 20, right? So I'm losing 60 bucks, that's the way it is. Right, but it gets a person into the sport. So we have the argument and you should put up with the stress. No, I shouldn't. No one should put up with crap. Okay, no one. I don't care if you're a boss, if you're the CEO of a company, you shouldn't have to put up with abuse from people. Right? And the whole fact that you're just here giving me abuse, I don't want to put up with it. It's not good for my heart. It's not good for my stress levels. I don't want to deal with this stuff. I didn't join an archery. I didn't get into archery to deal with abuse. Okay? I didn't, it's not why I joined. I set up an archery shop because I want to help people, I want to show them how to shoot, get more people in the sport, and hopefully they have a good time and they enjoy their life and go, this is a cool sport. And hopefully they're in it forever, right? That's the way it was for me when I sort of started off. I was like, oh, here's a sport I can do. I've got asthma, I can do this, and I can be good at it. And it made me feel good about myself that I was good at the sport. And the harder I worked, the more I achieved, and you know the better the results were. So it was a very much a thing to me about hard work and the more hard work I put in, the luckier I get. It's a very good message, right? 
So this is the bow. Um, now we've made a new string for it. We're going to shoot it. Um, so the message of this is there's no warranties on strings regardless of the bow. If you dry fire your bow, it's not covered by warranty. You shoot it without an arrow, you don't knock the arrow properly, it's not covered by warranty. Strings are not covered. You break the cams, you break the strings, not covered. I feel like I do this on every video. Because it's the... In a shop owner's sense, it is literally the worst thing to have to deal with. It's like... And you've got to deal with it almost every day. Right? With people blowing up their gear, or their mates blowing up their gear. Right? So... A lot of it happens because the people haven't been showing what to sh how to shoot. We're going to shoot, so shoot this. So the draw cycle is very soft, very soft. Pull it back to there. Look, it's not a fast machine, which is why the boat didn't blow up when I was dry fired. Um, in fact, all that happened was the peep sight came out, which wasn't too bad. Um, I'm just going to move the peep sight up a little bit. Um, this bow was set up by one of my staff, a young junior in my shop. Um, which I'll talk about in this video. Um, like, I kind of guess he's an Australian champion. Um, he started off the sport, he, he, he didn't really... What am I going to say? He didn't really shoot that much. He wasn't really that much into it. And that's, I'm, hopefully I'm not being unfair by him. He was probably doing it because his parents were forcing him and no disrespect to his parents. Um, and when he started in my shop, he was very, very quiet, very reserved. The development in this young man is amazing. I cannot stress it enough. He comes in, he shows, he shows initiative. He now shoots at a very high level, like Australian level. I think he will win the nationals when he goes to Canberra in a, in a couple of months. And I think he will shoot nas a national record. No respect to anyone else in Australia who may or may not beat him. He's just shooting very, very well. And I don't know anyone else who's shooting that well. And maybe I'm not up with all the top shooters in Australia at the moment, but he's shooting very, very well, right? But the thing is, the development in him to go and talk to customers, to help people out, it's like a new person. And I'm just like the improvements, outstanding, and that's what I love about the shop. I enjoy that as a boss, as a mentor, it's what I like, right? So. It's one of the things, as a boss, you love to see development in staff. Look, I think the bow itself is really good. It's not fast. It's a good beginner's bow. Like, the limbs are rock solid. I can see there's no flex in them. <laughs> They're dead straight. Um, the bow winds down to nothing and goes up to 70 pounds. Um, the bow looks like brand new. He shot it for two months. He broke, I think, six arrows in the process of shooting this bow. So, I don't know. But the bow looks like brand new. Um, I suppose my message of this video is if you want to have a shop to come to, to get your bows fixed, to have people work on your gear, be nice to them because I have thrown out of my shop in 40 years of archery I can think of a couple of people I have literally said don't come back to in 40 years in 40 years and he's like he rang me up and he said oh you know we got off on the wrong foot no you're a pain I said I don't need that in my life. Um, don't come back ever again. It's like, if you're gonna be rude and you just wanna create problems, just go to the other shop who will not deal with you. Guarantee it, he doesn't have $200 bows. And if you buy a bow on eBay and you blow it up like you did with this one, then you have no one to help you, right? So think about that, it means you've just closed your thing. 
Now, on this topic, like I used to have a store in Canberra. Uh, now there's no store in Canberra. Um, there is a small one in, in a neighboring suburb. Um, but it's that whole thing that you should appreciate that you've got someone there to help you. Like, whether you do or don't, that's up to you. I do. I appreciate the fact that there's a shop. And you might say, well, it's your shop. I wouldn't have a shop if there was someone else here to have a shop. I would retire. Right? So I didn't want to have a shop. I wanted to retire. Right? I wanted to retire and go and do stuff. But the other shops went out of business. Look, I think the bow shoots <laughs> absolutely lovely. It's not a it's not an amazing bow as far as you know like super fast or anything like that my grips down the other end are excellent um and this is the thing with these types of bows like jung sing toe point produce these types of bows which are just to get people into the sport they are rock solid they are really really good now i just i'm going to talk about a couple of things about strings the materials that these strings come with a set of gas strings i'm going to go gas which is just I'm picking a string. A set of gas strings cost about $200. This bow cost $200. So the strings that come with this bow wouldn't be made out of the same materials and just wouldn't be the same quality. No disrespect to Jung Sing in this process. So when we made up a new string for this, like the material which we use here is $50 a roll. I'm going to guess that the material they use here is the cheaper material. I'm going to guess, right? So it's just... And the cost of labor in Australia versus China is going to be a lot different. So, but look, the young, the young man in my shop made this string. Uh, he tuned up the bow because it was a little bit out of time. Um, so the cams are now timed. It feels good. Um, feels, feels good. Anyway, so that was this complaint where I got rid of the customer. Um, I actually did there was another customer who broke two bows um, which I did a video on I said not to come back after I gave him his money back as well uh, so there's been a couple but literally I have over 40 50,000 customers and I've had a couple where I've said don't come back to so anyway I'm Stephen Han from Archery Supplies this is the Jung Sing I think it's an M121 I think I thought it was a rogue the difference is the the design of the handles a little bit different but besides that pretty much the same um and they're about 200 odd dollars i think it was 350 dollars i think with arrows release aid sights arrow rest quiver and a bow case and a bow case like i think it's an amazing value like a soft case yeah 350 amazing anyway if you dry fire your bow shoot it without an arrow derail your bow strings are gonna break peeps are gonna come out just be nice to people and say hey can you please help me fix it most times we don't charge but then sometimes I do charge like a small amount because I'm like otherwise you don't appreciate it so when you give stuff away people don't appreciate it um, they just take it for granted they think well you're making so much money when you sell this bow no I'm not so now I've got to stick up signs in my shop to say strings are not covered on any bow. If you dry fire your bow and your string break, not covered. If the serving separates on the cam, on any bow, it's not covered, right? And I sort of say this because I've seen new Hoyts where the serving separates around here after two weeks, it's not covered. Hoyt will not do anything about it. Matthews will not do anything about this. Some companies will, but most won't. So, I'm going to say PSC strings are pretty good. I'm not saying that because they have a PSC string shirt on. I can't recall a PSC string having a problem. I can't recall an Elite string having a problem. I'm not saying that because of Elite. I think Bowtech strings have been pretty good. Um, I've definitely seen it on Hoyts and I'm pretty sure I've seen it on Matthews. Um, but overall, the strings are pretty good. And in fact, that you get some serving separation around here. And I think I have seen it on Elite. I think I've seen it once on a lead after six months and we said to the customer, we'll reserve the string for him at no cost. Um, and he said, well, stuff you, um, I'll buy my bows off someone else because he would have had to pay for postage back to us and back to him.
So, like I said, strings are not covered by anyone, by any means. Um, read the read the warranty section if you want on a bow. Like, you know, before you go back to the shop and say I demand a warranty, read the warranty card. Because then you can say to the shop, look, it's in the warranty card here. So that way the shop can go back to the manufacturer. Strings are generally not covered. Now, I, my understanding is like strings like gas are covered for separation. And I have seen gas strings separate. But the gas strings haven't been brought from me, so I hadn't, didn't have to do a warranty. Um, or it may be a fitting issue, because I didn't fit the strings. So, but anyway... If you have string separation, just check your warranties on stuff. But generally, bow companies do not warranty strings. That's what the purpose of this video is. And to show you this bow working. Um, it's not, not a bad little bow. Um, great for the price. Now get your into archery, get your strong, get your form going, and then you can buy yourself a cool bow. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.